everyone. Welcome to Allen Next. I'm Dr. Swarup Dikshit, your faculty for surgery. So again, we have brought a new important case to this clinical series and today we'll be discussing a very, very, very important case. So we have a patient in emergency and it is actually 10, 15 of the day. So 10, 15 p.m. But yes, excited to teach you people. So that is the level of excitement that I decided to make a video. So I have a four year old girl who has actually fallen from a height. So that is a 20 to 25 feet. Actually, what is patient is patient's attendants are telling. So 20 to 25 feet, the baby has fallen down and they have been brought to my hospital. So this is a case of head injury and I would like to show a few important things. So if you see, there is a raccoon eye. This is what is classically known as raccoon eye. So this is a raccoon eye on the left side. So basically we know that hematoma is on the left side. This baby, we have cleared everything. This baby is also having the rhinorrhea. It's not confirmed, but there was a lot of blood coming out. So we have just given the things for testing. So yes, there was a CSF, suspected CSF rhinorrhea from the left side with the raccoon eye. So my question is, what side of the base of the skull fracture if it is? What side it could be? It is anterior one third. Because anterior one third, we have rhinorrhea. And remember, when we talk about middle one third, we will look for CSF autoria. Now, in this baby, in this baby, there is nothing, there is nothing known as perimestoidal. Perimestoidal hematoma bruising is not there. But yes, uh, there is one very important thing. You can see this hematoma. This is bruising. Now, whenever you are assessing, whenever you are assessing a head injury patient, the first thing that you need to understand is the GCS of the patient. Now, when the patient was brought to us, now this is a four-year-old baby. So, whenever we talk about GCS, we need to take care of three components. We take, we need to take care of eye opening. We need to take care of verbal system. We need to take care of the motor system. So, eye opening, spontaneous, it's four. To pain, uh, to command, it is three. To pain, it is two. And no response, it is one. Then verbal system, when we talk about the adults, it is oriented five. Confused four. Inappropriate speech or incomplete sentences, that is three. Two is incomprehensible sounds or moans, that is two, and then no response is one. Now, when we talk about pediatric GCS, what's the difference? If we talk about infant, the baby is cooing, that is what is five. Or the vocabulary is of that particular age. If you see that vocabulary, the age adjustable vocabulary is there oriented, then that is five. Otherwise, the patient is crying. So, comfortable cry is one thing, then cry to pain is one thing. So, that is how we go for four, three. And then moaning and insoluble cries too. And then one is no response. Then we have the same things for motor response that six is oriented, obeys command. Then five is shows localization of the pain. Four is withdrawal. Three is flexion to pain. Two is extension to pain. And one is a cadaveric position. Now, when we are talking about this baby, this is having a suspected head of injury, head injury with the base of the skull fracture. This is what we are suspecting. Now we have already seen the GCS. We have already, uh, this patient has been with us for now for five, six hours. Now we have been stabilizing this patient. Now patient is hemodynamically stabilized. The patient developed the convulsions. The patient also had a history of vomiting. Now I will ask the parents, is bachche ko ulti hua tha? Ulti hua tha to kaisa ulti hua tha? Jor se ulti hua tha? Aage jhatka de ki lamba ulti hua tha ki normal sa ulti hua tha? Kaisa tha? जो फेक की बाहर फेक की उल्टी हुआ था ना जैसा आप लोग क्या बता रहे थे जब तो एक्चुअली द पेशेंट्स टोल्ड अस दैट दे वर हैविंग अ प्रोजेक्टाइल दे वर दे वर हैविंग अ प्रोजेक्टाइल वॉमिटिंग हां तो उल्टी फेक की हुआ था कि नॉर्मल सो दैट वाज अ प्रोजेक्टाइल वॉमिटिंग सो प्रोजेक्टाइल वॉमिटिंग देन द बेबी आल्सो डेवलप्ड कन्वर्जेंस फॉर व्हिच वी गेव हिम लेविटार एसीटेम सो व्हाट इज दिस दीस आर द साइंस ऑफ इंट्राक्रैनियल हाइपरटेंशन सो व्हाट in case of infants or in case of kids, what are the things that you will look for the signs of intracranial hypertension? You will be looking for the eyes. So here you can see the classical sunset eyes. Can you see the sunset eyes? Just focus on this. So there is sunset eye and this is what is very, very, very important. Normally, if you see my eyes, they are totally different. And if you see this baby's eye, they are sunset eyes. So this is what is very important sign that we have. Then in kids who are less than two years, you'll have bulging of fontanelli. But here we have slight, you can say slight hematoma. This is because of the uh, trauma also. But this side you can see, it's it's bulged out now. 
So bulging fontanelli, diastasis of the sutures and dilated scalp veins are the important signs of intracranial hypertension. So now with this, how should we evaluate the investigation that we will be going for this patient tomorrow is a CT scan. So NCCT is the gold standard for this and that will tell you what is the level of injury. But meanwhile, what is the standard of management? The first line is a medical management. We need to elevate the head. So why we need to elevate the head? Because when we are elevating the head, the first thing that we need to understand is that we increase the CSF outflow and blood outflow. This reduces the intracranial outflow, uh, hypertension. Why? Because you know the doctrine of Monroe Kelly says that whenever there is any addition to the skull, there is initial egress of CSM and venous blood and this is what we are doing. Again, we maintain isothermia, isoventilation. Nowadays, we don't go for hyperventilation and hypothermia. So, isoventilation and isothermia is what? The second line is we try for osmotic diuresis and we have added many toll to this. If the patient doesn't survive to this management, then we'll go for high dose sedatives where we go for barbiturates or vacuronium. So, the aim is to suppress the brain and induce coma. When the brain is in coma, then what happens students? multiple spikes of the cranial activity go down, the excess blood which is relieved that will be actually shunted to the ischemic parts and then if that also doesn't work, we will go for an EVD that is ventriculostomy or external ventricular drainage. So this is how we evaluate and how we manage. I hope you like this small case of intracranial, you can say uh, intracranial hypertension or neurosurgery. So do subscribe to Alan Next channel and keep on following us for more such exciting videos. Thank you.